My name is Chris Burke. I go to the Art Institute of Chicago. Decided to come to the Art Institute because they treat sound as an artistic medium, uh, which I thought was really hip. This is the Interactopus. It's, uh, it is eight light sensors which communicate with my computer through Art Bus Board, which is a project developed at the Art Institute um, by Ed Bennett, Laura Emelianoff, and a few other names. Basically, they're photo cells at the end of each of these. There's eight of them. Hey there! At Radio Shack. They're really cheap. They all transfer numbers um, to a computer program that I wrote in Max MSP. And also, since I can't afford jitter, Cycling 74, uh, I'm using Pure Data and um, Gem, which is the open source equivalent. Uh, but it transfers the numbers that these eyes give me um, based on light and shadow and turns them into sound and video. When I started out, I wasn't actually working in video at all, but um, somewhere along the line, I uh, figured out a way to use the open source program Gem. Um, Gem is a really great alternative to Jitter, and I decided that since I'm you know, playing it as an instrument, which is uh, a visual component, as well as you know, the audio that comes out of it, I wanted to sort of you know, cross those two mediums um, because I am a multimedia artist. I should be working in as many as I can. And so that encouraged me to kind of figure out a way to use video uh, and, and have it respond in the same way that the sounds did. So as, as I move this, it's like if I point it at you, mm -hmm. it's getting the light off of you. If I point it at me, it's getting the light off of me. If I point it over there, it's getting, getting the floor and those overheads. Mm -hmm. um, and that really makes it a pretty versatile instrument because you can have two people playing it like this, or one person, um, four people in a circle, and even if everybody wants to get all cozy with it, it's got other sensors aside from the arms. It's got eight in all, hence the, the title Interactopus. Well, the biggest challenge is working with new technology um, because it's buggy, it's still in development. I'm decent at programming, I'm decent at building things, but working with something that somebody else is still developing um, hands down a lot of uh, technical difficulties to me that I have to work around. Um, for example, it's tough to control which of these goes where in the program, so I kind of have to um, fudge it around a little every time I work it up, and, and uh, a way that I've worked around it is basically um, not caring what corresponds to what. And so each of these kind of does a similar thing, and it doesn't matter which does what, and you still end up with a good piece. The biggest surprise, I think, was that it could play a room by itself. Sometimes it does stuff without even moving, uh, because if there's changing light in a room, or if it moves at all in the room, then obviously these sensors are getting different information based on um, what the ambient light is. So. Uh, it will give you, it will give the program different information and the program will send out different sounds and videos based on where it is positioned in a room, facing, who's near it, what they're doing, and it's, uh, I think that was the most surprising thing was the amount of situations that this is actually sensitive to. The non-audio construction of this is uh, found leather, recycled leather pants actually that I found in a dumpster. Um, whole box of them. They were brand new with price tags on them, so I think I beat somebody who worked at the store to the dumpster. Uh, and so yeah, recycled leather um, and recycled uh, armature wire. I think this was maybe from a dummy that perhaps wore the leather pants. Um, find a lot of things in the trash. It's tough as an artist to actually buy anything, so I usually work with free materials. If I were you know, had a little money to throw around, I would do infrared because then it wouldn't be as dependent on natural light and ambient light, but honestly, I like the fact that this is subject to its, its environment rather than just distance of something from the sensor. I think I would probably like to make this some sort of uh, installation, full room, make it bigger, make it more engaging, and 
uh, incorporate the viewer as an interactive audience slash performer um, so that it would be an installation you could walk into and participate in.